back to 2.30 in the morning. If you've been watching from the beginning, you know I started at 2.23. The goal was to get to 2.40 lean by the end of the year. Still a goal. However, the, uh, the application has been different. I've made an audible. You got to do that. It doesn't matter how you get there. You just got to get there. Whatever works, works. It's all about the results. So I'd recently watched a video by Dr. Mark, Mike Isriatel. I'll link it below. And he's talking about how much to eat, um, you know, to gain weight and how gain taining or main gaining is a difficult thing because it's hard to track. Um, in short, you know, it's hard to know what your actual maintenance is and maybe you undercut it and you're in an excess of, you know, 25 calories a day. That's not going to gain you weight. And in the long term, you don't even know if that was because you had too much sodium the night before and that's why you're a pound heavier that day. Um, so I was dealing with that. I was dipping above, you know, at or above 230 and then dipping back down 226 and I couldn't quite get there. I was trying to, to gain too slowly. And um, so I just started upping the calories much more to where I know I'm certainly in a caloric surplus. And the benefits have been I'm looking a lot bigger and a lot better. And I'm putting muscle and size on the areas that, um, and I had started eating more before I, I saw this video, but it was really a nice confirmation bias um, because my neck is starting to fill out, my calves are starting to fill out, my arms even more, like my stubborn areas to where I, I know if I'm eating too little calories, those, those areas, they just don't grow or they'll start to wither. Um, and they're really hard to grow, but all of a sudden, boom, they're there. So that's been really cool. Uh, you know, more energy, back up to 2.30 plus in the morning. Um, and so that's cool. And also one thing that a lot of people or influ fitness influencers, they don't talk about in the space is that like, it seems like almost all of them eat the same amount of calories every single day. And they know that over the course of one week, that puts them in a weekly surplus. But every day you're burning very different uh, calorie ranges, unless you're like the most consistent man on earth. Um, I know I burn wildly different ranges of calories every day and it becomes um like i don't want to burn a bunch of calories if i go to an mma class tomorrow or i go on a long walk with my wife or you know i'm more active and on my feet with the kids like i don't want to have a great you know arm workout and i really need to grow the arms and i'm because i hit the same amount of calories every day now i'm in a, a deficit that day that's that's not good so i eat um a surplus for every given day. I might burn 4,500 calories tomorrow, 3,500 today. I adjust, and that's also good because it keeps your body guessing. So your body's not gonna just adjust to, here's your 3,200 calories a day, and maybe I'm burning more, but th the body is an amazing um, adapter, and if it knows every single day I'm getting only 3,200 calories, I'm just gonna slow the metabolic system down a little bit so I, I know I'm getting what I match. You know, it's all about survival. I don't wanna do that. I like to eat, as Jack Black said. Uh, in School of Rock. Well, why don't you go on a diet? I like to eat. I like to be extra active because I really like to have a food party at night times. So um, that's a great benefit. I'm, I'm able to have a whole, a whole bunch of food parties. And it's like I get an allotment every day. I burn 4,500. Well, I got I to gotta eat 5,000 today and I got to spend every single dollar, spend every single calorie. And it, it, it turns into a fun deal, you know, you eating cake and pizza and all sorts of stuff because you've already hit your protein um, allotment for the day. And anyways, I'll stop ranting about how much I love food. Uh, but if you're having a hard time growing or, or it's at all difficult to track whether or not you're gaining weight, up your calories. And uh, I think your body will thank you. And so will the mirror. Um, so today it's a bench day. I'm actually going right into my first working set of bench press. The past two times at 365, I've hit four reps. Today, I'm gonna try to hit five. <laughs> Couldn't quite find my movement groove on that set. The sets two, or reps two and three felt a little weird. Uh, where I felt strong today. I felt like, oh, this might be the day I'll get five. No. Um, I've been playing around with my grips. Uh, I used to always be pointer finger on the knurling, get a wider grip, and it just, I fit into the, into the exercise well in that way. And I started moving it to my pinky on there because I thought, okay, in theory, yeah, I'm not as strong in this position, but maybe it'll grow my triceps more. 
again, one of those hard to, to determine things if my triceps have grown much at all and if it was from moving my bench press in, I'm not sure. Um, but some other alterations that I'm thinking of making and kind of midweek applying this week is, you know, one, I'm not coming into the weight room and just winging it. I told you I was, uh, I may have mentioned in the last episode that I've, I've, that was kind of my break from a power bodybuilding program that I was running for a while where that was so regimented and organized and tracking every set and rep and reserve and uh, that was burning me out after a while and I ran it for a long time, six months or so. Um, and so my break was kind of just coming in here and being like, ah, I'm just gonna throw it around, you know, and kind of go on the fly, which was cool. And now I'm feeling, okay, recharged and kind of the desire to progressive over overload certain movements again. And uh, so I wrote something out today and I'm, I'm sure I'll have to adjust it as I go a little bit, but the focus is going to be uh, very programmed towards the arms. So, um, you know, my chest, my back, my legs, that's all gonna be, you know, maintenance volumes where I'm just hitting just enough working sets to, to maintain. So I'm not overloading my body and my central nervous system too much to where I can't adapt and grow because if I try to keep the same volume on everything and then also just blow out the arms and throw an ex a whole bunch of extra volume on top of what I'm already doing, then you start to overload your central nervous system, your body, and you kill your gains kind of in every area. So I'm going to add more volume to the arms in a, a more organized way, track it much better, and then take some volume away from some of the other body parts that I feel good about and I just want to maintain which it's much easier to maintain the size of a muscle than it is to acquire new muscle. Um, and so, you know, you can have as little as like four to six working sets per week on a, on a um, body part to maintain it. Um, whereas to grow it, you're gonna have to throw some extra volume at it. So not only volume, but frequency. So I'm gonna start hitting my arms right now three times per week, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday and hit them hard and heavy. Um, so the overall volume is going to be higher, but so will the frequency. And I may even dial that into four days a week. We'll see. And I'll adjust as I go and uh, keep you posted. Um, I'll have to do a little video where I'm measuring them. Last time I measured, they were a little over 18. So that was good. That's definitely growth from the start of uh, the series at the end of last year in December, which was uh, 17 and 5 eighths, I believe. <laughs> oh! take the 25 off that side that was almost a disaster all right here we go this will be uh my last set here on the barbell press um and then i'll do two sets of um in incline machine press uh do some triceps lateral raise call it a day again reps I'll take it see that red dot yeah that means it's on hi hey hey y'all how you doing good how, how you doing Bubby I'm doing great I I did today is on plate I had fun so much so much fun I love it you want to show him your dude who's that Ninja yeah Raphael. That's right. The best Ninja Turtle. Raphael's my favorite. Raphael is my favorite too. Yeah, we share that in common. Same thing, bud. Yeah. He's the toughest, I think. Whew, I'm winded from that last set. <laughs> oh, buddy, you're the best, bud. And I love your Spider-Man sweatshirt. That's rad, dude. Bobby is a... Uh, I know I've told you in one of the, some of the past episodes, she, he's super strong and has a super beautiful heart as well. He's one of my heroes. <sighs> More man than a lot of men I know already.
Oh. Sorry. That's all right, pal. That happens sometimes. I just need you to put this back on. You want me to put it back on? Do I, do I like this Ninja Turtle? Yeah, let us know if you like this Ninja Turtle. And if you don't like Raphael, who's your favorite Ninja Turtle? Uh, this one. That's your favorite, Bobby? All right, we got one vote for Raphael. Actually, two votes, because he's my favorite, too. Uh. Ah. Yeah. Can you do your teeth like Raphael? Yeah. I feel him, too. How do you do it? Like this. Uh. Ah. Uh. Ah. <laughs> well, a new exercise I'm going to try out in this training block for the triceps are the standing or sitting easy bar tricep extension and uh, the JM press. I haven't, I've done the JM press a little bit. I haven't really pushed it. It was hard to tell how well it was hitting my triceps when I have tried it in the past couple months. But today it's going to be the easy bar. Mm. This is my first time ever doing this one. Outside of the warm up. I can't. Hey. Hey. Ah, oh, neighbor. neighbor. Uh. You're doing a ball. <clears throat> Can I have the ball? Yes. Can I inspect? That's actually it felt great. I didn't even count the reps. I was just really trying to stay in the muscle and kind of feel how feeling it where I want to. So I'll have to watch this back and see how many reps I got. Track that a little bit. Um, but I love finding. Uh, I'm kind of in search for a movement where it's kind of a compound movement-ish, but really just hits the triceps. I like the idea of that for dips, but I don't, I don't feel it the way I just felt that one in my triceps. Uh, so that's exciting. You are a big boy, buddy. <sighs> All right. I got 50 pound dumbbells here I'm gonna do. Alternating curls between my j my tricep presses. Hey, buddy, don't t please don't touch that. <sighs> Thank you. set. So as I was saying, I've increased the calories overall and the benefits of that have been, you know, the stubborn areas like my neck, arms, and calves have pretty immediately filled out uh, where I've been hammering them and it's been hard to grow even if I was just in a minor surplus. Um, and it's kind of got me fired up of like, man, how, how far can I take this? Maybe I try to get up to like 255, whittle it down to 240 from there. Maybe I just carry a little extra body fat as my new norm. I don't know, because it honestly, I, I put on a little bit of fat in this period. I can see it. You know, my love handles are just a little thicker and things, but I still have abs, all the same things, but I, I look way bigger. And um, I've always had that kind of, that fine line in film, you know, in most of my roles, you know, it has something to do with my body. I'm a big dude. I'm shirtless in a lot of them, so you want to be as big as you can, but also be really lean for the camera. Um, especially when you're shirtless, you, you don't look, you look a lot bigger even if you're lighter, but you're really lean. Just feels, it makes you look bigger. But I almost kind of like the idea of leaning into this really big blocky dude where I'm just undeniably big because when I'm really lean, if I got like, you know, a black t-shirt on in an audition I, and you seeing me from here up, it's hard to tell that I'm as big as I am. People wouldn't guess that. And even walking around, 
And so, yeah, maybe I won't be as lean all the time, but I want to push this and kind of see how big can I get. And really, that only helps me in film because it lumps me into a category where it's like we know exactly what to do with you. You're huge. You're going to be a villain. You're going to be doing action stuff. You're going to be the muscle, the enforcer. And at this stage of my career, I want something that really, really separates me, where I'm not just you know, good at a whole lot of things or can do a whole lot of things because that gets you a whole lot of nothing. You're not specific enough. Um, and, and so I'm kind of excited by the prospect of potentially just, yeah, going on a, a big blowout bulk for the whole year and just seeing how big I, I can take this thing, how much bigger it makes me look and uh, kind of make adjustments from there. But if anything, that'll only help me in the film world. So I'm excited by that. And that's, you know, any of you that may be actors that are watching this, a lot of people come in and they say, like I got into the industry, they said lose weight. You don't want to get typecast. You want to be able to be a leading man and do everything. You're not going to be doing everything for a long time as an actor. Um, unless you just have the luckiest break in the world and you book something that... But still, you, you're going to have to lead with whatever you are most specific as. I'm clearly a buff jock. You know, I'm, I'm clearly an athlete-looking guy, a big, big human. And so I have to really lean into that. And it's good to get typecast because that leads to more work. Even some of the A-listers, you know, or who did I hear? Um, I, can't remember, I can't think of the guy's name right now. Great actor. Maybe not an A-lister, but you see him all the time. Clearly not because I can't remember his name, but he's like, great, typecast me. I get more work because you, be, get, you get known as specifically as this one thing. And in that one thing, you're at the top of the list. There's a million different lists of specificity um, outside of just the A-listers. What celebrity can we get attached to this project? Then it comes into who's the best enforcer, who's like the great big guy with comedy, John Cena. You know, and like you, you want to start dialing in on your specifics, your biggest strengths in your wheelhouse, and I think it's better to leverage those and really pour all your effort into those than it is to try to just bring up all your weak links and now just be pretty good at everything. Um, the thing that's going to get your foot in the door is your biggest strengths. The thing that when people look at you, they immediately think librarian, jock, football player, you know, bookworm, meathead, whatever it is, um, you know, creepy guy next door. Um, Whatever those things are, you gotta you gotta lean into them, and you may not like them, but that's how you're gonna get the work uh, initially, and you'll be able to branch out from there. Um, so that's the goal for me right now: get big and blocky as possible, and uh, become one of these on-screen BAs that can uh, really get after it in this action lane. Here we go. Next up. Hmm. good I really like that lift I really like that I mean I felt that in my triceps the whole way it's there's a little bit of pressure in the elbows but not similar to the the pressure in your elbows you can get if you're not warmed up enough yet on like a skull crusher but not as severe so that's good staying with the 50s here Oh. <sighs> 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 
Focus on those. I get a much deeper stretch the way I set this up. It's even kind of hard to lodge myself in there and get my hands under the bar, but it allows me to come down really deep, press it up. So I go a little, a little slower than my usual cadence than I would if I'm loading up the bench press. Uh, but this gives me a great pump in the upper chest and uh, gets me sore, you know? And uh, I think it's grown me as well. So those are all good signs to stick with a, a lift that works for you. More set of those uh, incline presses. But between those, I'm gonna do some lateral raise. I'm going 30 pounds and I'll probably have to rip that out to uh, about 20-ish, give or take. Then whatever I get, I'll just take a few seconds rest between get you know if I, if I get 20 before i have to put them down then i'll get 20 in uh small rep ranges where i'm only giving myself five ten, ten seconds rest between i'll show you Whew, here we go uh, mm. few seconds so that was 20 not full reps but whew, give myself a few seconds probably rep out fives wherever I fail at so I'll pick them back up one two three ah. yeah, five. repeat that till I get 20 reps Huh. Ooh. Ooh. Whoa. Uh. And generally just rest in enough to get that deep burn out of my shoulders and traps. My traps are taking over a little bit. That's all right. I don't hit traps directly, so get a little work on them. Uh. Ooh. Ooh. Cool, buddy. Two balloons. Two balloons. <laughs> 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 All right, y'all. That's it. We're becoming a little more something every day. Go towards your vision. In my case, the vision is, is changing as I go. It's uh, making audibles. It's improving on itself. I'm getting better ideas, being able to see new lanes. Uh, so for me, that's going to be getting as big as possibly can. Not worry about the fat gain that comes with it. You know, uh, just keep the six pack, but I don't need all the striations, essentially. Try to get to 250, 255, 230 right now. And then we'll think about whittling it down from there. At least that's what I'm saying right now. It may change again. I'm not going to cement everything. Uh, but at, at the end of the day, I'm going to be getting bigger, a whole lot bigger. So 
Whatever your goals are, try to see that in the future. What does that look like? Build the plan towards getting to that thing. And uh, even if it's just an inch every day, you're getting a little closer. And those inches add up and they start giving you excitement that you're making progress towards the things that are most important to you. The things that you set out in an imaginary place. I could get to this place. I want to get to this place. Okay, I'm committed to getting to this place. This is what I'm going to do to get to that place. Then all of a sudden it just opens up your eyes to bigger and better things. It's kind of what has been happening to me and what I told you today. It doesn't have to look the way it did then because as I've been going, I see even better opportunities, better paths for me at this moment in time in my life. So whatever that is for you, let me know below. Let's get after it together. Grab 2024 by the balls. Twist. Don't ever let go. You own it.